maximum clique size. Since the complete graph K5 is non-planar, any time you have a planar graph, the maximum clique size is at most four. So if you have a planar graph, you can find its maximum clique size very quickly. You pick up all the four element subsets one at a time. If you find a clique of size four, you quit and you say omega is four. You don't have to look at five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc., because there aren't any. If you scan all the four element sets and there are no cliques, you then pick up all the three element sets and see if you can find a triangle. If you find one, you halt and you say the clique size is three. If you don't, you look for an edge. If you found an edge, the maximum clique size is two and you halt. Otherwise, it's a bunch of loose points and the maximum clique size is one. But you see, you can find the maximum clique size of a planar graph very quickly. And you don't have a prayer if you try to do that for a general graph. This is something very, very special to the world of planar graphs. All right. Now at the bottom, we've talked about a result which is called the four color theorem. And it has a fascinating history. And I want to tell you a bit about it. But let's talk about what the result is. The result is that if you have a planar graph, it can be colored with four colors. Its chromatic number is at most four. Now, it starts not with graphs. It starts with the notion of maps. But we'll get to that in just a second. Let's talk about the characterization of planar graphs. And I need a notion called a homeomorph. So I show you a graph on the left. And this graph is not planar. Or at least it's not drawn without edge crossings. But the notion of a homeomorph applies to a general graph. One graph is a homeomorph of another one if the second one is obtained by inserting one or more vertices on some of the edges. So look at the graph on the right. And you see, it's basically the same graph. But on some of the edges, I put in one or two or three, or I put as many as I like. The graph on the right is a homeomorph of the graph on the left. And it's obvious that a graph is planar if and only if a homeomorph of it is planar. And it's also obvious that any subgraph of a planar graph is planar. And so when you put those two things together, a graph is nonplanar if it contains a homeomorph of K5 as a subgraph. So back to that algorithmic question, if you're challenged as to whether or not a graph is planar, and you come up with a certificate, which is a subgraph, which is a homeomorph of K5, we now know that that's a certificate that the graph is not planar. That's pretty neat. Now, I just want to show you this slide, because we're going to come back and do it at the beginning of next class. For two colorable graphs, you can actually lower the number of edges a little bit. So it was 3 and minus 6 in general, but for two colorable planar graphs, we're going to get it to 2 and minus 4. And now I want to skip to something and show you a pretty picture which I found on the web. The origin of the four color theorem in that problem goes back to coloring maps. And this is something uh, that map makers have been doing for centuries and centuries. And here's a, a, a cute picture I found on the web. It's a map of the state of Georgia. And it was produced by a map maker named David H. Burr, who lived from 1803 to 1875. 
I don't know exactly when Mr. Burr made this map, but do you notice anything special about this map? Okay, so first of all, it's, got, it's only got four colors. I think there's a, a kind of a green, a blue, a yellow, and a pink, pink, purple. Huh? And, and it's, the map is made in such a way that any two counties that share a boundary, they get different colors. And that's just for the visual clarity of somebody looking at it so you can see the boundaries of the counties. So map makers have known about this coloring problem for centuries. And they've known that you can do it with four. They're not mathematicians. Might turn out to be a little harder to prove that than you think. And that's where we'll pick up when we get back together on Thursday, uh, on Tuesday of next week.